Well, hello and welcome everybody to this OpenShift Commons briefing. Today, we're really pleased to have a presentation on best practices for SSO, um, and we're going to be talking about using Key Cloak for our OpenShift Enterprise. We have with us Bill DeCoste, who's a software engineer on the OpenShift team, and Diogenes Ritori, who's one of our product managers for OpenShift as well. And we're going to do this so that we let the guys give a 20, 30 minute presentation with a demo, and then afterwards we'll do Q&A. If you could enter your, your questions in the chat, um, we'll read them out and unmute you so you can do follow-up. But without further ado, I'd like to let um, Diogenes introduce the topic and introduce Bill. All right. Uh, thanks everyone for your time again. Uh, Diogenes Rattori here. I'm happy to have uh, Bill joining me. Uh, so this today I'm going to talk a little bit, just do a level set on some of the middleware services we have on OpenShift already, uh, and then a little bit on, on, on our ideas for SSO. And then after that, we're going to have uh, Bill doing, let's say, the majority of the work. So he's the man here. He'll be doing very cool demonstrations for you. So Bill, next slide, please. Uh, Go thanks. So this is this are some of the services we have on OpenShift today. So Red Hat. Uh, we are we work with ourselves and we work with partners to bring more and more uh, capabilities into OpenShift. Uh, some of the services uh, that are already are available there, uh, some of the, let's say the the types of workloads you can run on OpenShift uh, are mentioned here. I just mentioned like let's say the most popular ones we've seen, which is JBoss EAP. So we have today JBoss EAP running OpenShift, and our integration is such that uh, for example, if you spin up two containers of JBoss, it automatically creates and configures a cluster for you, so you don't have to do anything. We have just recently added our a decision service, which comes from the business uh, rules management system product, and with that you can uh, make sure your rules. Uh, execution uh, happens happen from your application uh, source code and you can evolve your business rules separately from uh, the rest of your application. We recently added a data caching solution, distributed data caching solution with DataGrid. You can also have your very nice camera routes running as individual microservices with your Fuse solution. Um, we had messaging already and I'm sure you know that uh, you can also Tomcat and we integrate with JBoss Developer Studio as well. Um, next slide, please. So this, uh, there are other types of services that we wanted to bring to the OpenShift platform. So the, before, let's say, they were essentially uh, services to build your application, but we believe there are also infrastructure services that your application requires, right? Uh, or let's say even API services. So we'll be soon introducing uh, API services to OpenShift via API management. Uh, and the community project is API Man. So um, we have work uh, undergoing to have a API managing gateway on OpenShift uh, integrated with the platform. So you'll be able to secure APIs, control access to it, uh, every, all from the OpenShift platform. And another very common request we have, another very common use case is the ability to secure uh, applications itself from, uh, from, from another perspective and also now allowing single sign-on um, so um, we're uh, introducing JBoss Key Cloak as a tech preview on OpenShift. Uh, the name of the product is Red Hat Single Sign-On. OpenShift uh, is the first ones to receive this uh, this tech preview. Uh, it has not been announced to, to the general public, so uh, it is available uh, f uh, for uh, customers and people that want to try it on OpenShift. Uh, so it's uh, going to be very, I'm very happy to have uh, Bill demonstrating this. And our intention with single sign-on is that, uh, again, we do the hard lifting for you. You define your, your, your roles in your own application and then connect your application to our single sign-on and you don't have to do anything else, right? Um, so with that, uh, thanks. And I'm going to transition over to Bill who's going to be, let's say, explaining a little bit more in details what uh, we're talking about and running a few demos. Bill, on you. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Great. Thanks, thanks Diogenes. Just to check, can, can you hear me okay? Perfectly. Okay, great. Um, so I'll go through a couple of slides quickly, and then I'll uh, jump over to a demo. I think a demo is worth a thousand slides, particular in this case. Um, so what I'm going to focus on is is really what we're what we've got um, today for uh, Docker images or OpenShift images um, for SSO and for enabling SSO for um, uh, JE applications. Um, so this is really to provide uh, 
SSO to the end user applications. Uh, as Diogenes mentioned, it's it's based on uh, the community project Keycloak, um, and the latest version that I'll be demoing is, is 1.9.2. Um, key piece is that it supports um, both OAuth 2.0 and, and uh, OpenID Connect on top of it, as well as SAML. Uh, and you'll see this in the demo um, more clearly, but one of the cool things about OpenShift and what the images provide on top of OpenShift is the auto wiring and auto configuration um, of deployed applications when you actually go, you know, drop your war file uh, onto an application server and it's it's got a trigger in it that says, hey, I want to be uh, SSO enabled. It'll go configure both the SSO server, the, the Keycloak server, as well as uh, all the configuration over on the application side as well. Um, today we support uh, EAP-based web apps, essentially war deployments, um, so, you know, web applications and, and web services. There are Four new uh, images, three of which are, are a kind of particular concern, and those are the bottom three bullets that you see there. Um, there's the SSO or Keycloak server image. Um, there's, and then there are two other images that we've, uh, one has been out for a while, the EAP64 OpenShift image, and there's one that's in uh, beta right now for EAP7. And these have been enhanced so that they're, they've now got um, SSO kind of enabled capabilities, um, which, which you'll see in the demo. Um, so I'll dig a little bit deeper into each one of these. Um, the the, uh, the Keycloak or SSO server is really just a JE application, so it's deployed on top of its own uh, EAP7 instance. A um, couple kind of details, we, we actually base this particular image on a standalone image, which is you know, non-OpenShift goodness. Um, so it's just a straight Docker image. Um, and just like all the other images that we provide um, for kind of the JBoss portfolio or XPaaS, you can go and can modify the configuration of each one of these images by passing in environmental variables. And we'll see a little bit of that um, in the demo. But a generic example is, hey, I need to go and enable HTTPS, right? So where am I going to go and point it to the, the proper certificates or key pairs? Um, one of the other kind of key pieces of the SSO server configuration is in, in, you can go and create all of the, the server configuration in one big JSON file and import it and export it. Um, we have that capability as well inside of OpenShift. So if you don't want to do manual configuration, you've got your blessed uh, SSO server configuration. Uh, you can go and import that. We use OpenShift secret mechanism to provide that. Uh, and also one other piece that I just wanted to mention is we out of the box will go create a, an admin or a user with admin capabilities. Um, obviously that's configurable when you go and actually spin up the the, the server. Um, the, the next kind of quick point is the EAP6 and EAP7 images. Um, they both, they essentially what it is is all the, the, the capabilities for uh, enabling SSO for your deployed applications in the, is in there, and the when you actually go deploy your uh, application, the image will notice that it's either uh, keyed for there's a kind of a trigger in there that I'll show you in the source code um, for for either e either OAuth 2.0 and OpenID Connect uh, or SAML, so that when it when it recognizes that an application is saying, hey, I'm a SAML application, go auto wire me, auto configure me, um, that will get picked up and and the image will take care of that. Um, same ENV mechanism. Um, good example here is when you go and deploy an application, one of the things you want to tell it is, or tell the image, is, hey, where is the SSO server that, that I want to use to secure my application? So there's an ENV for that. Uh, when you go and deploy your application on top of EAP and you've got that little flag or trigger that says, hey, I'm a Keycloak application, what will happen is it'll go in and make a call over to the SSO server to say, hey, here, I'm a new app that needs to be secured um, through Keycloak and auto configure me a particular client. And, and so it'll do all the configuration on, on the SSO server side, and it'll also do the configuration on the internals of the app server, or the EAP instance, where the application itself is deployed. Um, so we take... Um, some reasonable defaults when you go and deploy an application, you tell us that it's either an OIDC or a SAML application. Uh, the image will take some reasonable defaults, and a lot of it is configurable um, via those ENVs. 
Uh, however, if you want to go and bypass all of the configuration that the image is going to go and create, um, specifying um, all sorts of kind of all the different options that KeyCloak allows you to go and configure, you can actually go and just as part of your application, give us an XML snippet and, and we'll take that instead of using um, all, all the default settings. So that's kind of a cool feature as well. Um, lots of templates. Hopefully everybody's familiar with um, OpenShift templates. Um, in, in a nutshell, what they do is they give you the capability to go and, and spin up one or more different pods or pieces of your application and auto-configure them uh, or hook them all together. So we've got a couple of different templates out there. There's a whole bunch of them for the SSO server itself where you can go and say, hey, I want an SSO server and I want it to be backed by you know, XYZ database where in this, you know, we could either use the embedded uh, EAP H2 database, you could hook it up to an external Postgres that's running in some other containers or other pods, ditto for MySQL. Uh, you can decide whether you want the database to be persistent or non-persistent. Uh, OpenShift has got a capability where you can back the database uh, with, say, an NFS mount. Um, so you've got templates for all that stuff. Really easy to go spin all this stuff up, and that's what the demo will show. Um, similar, there's, there's now templates for uh, EAP6 and EAP7 that have all the SSO capabilities in them, stuff like that, uh, that SSO um, URL so that you can tell the application where the SSO server is. Uh, this does require a little bit of manual configuration. Um, you've got to go and spin up, uh, manually go and configure a little bit of the SSO server. Um, go create users and roles and realms. And this is the normal way that people are going to do things, right? They're going to go spin up an SSO server, and then they'll go deploy applications out to multiple different pods or containers where their applications are deployed. Uh, so there's a little initial kind of setup to go and set up, you know, the users and roles in a particular realm or realm. Um, however, we've also got to kind of get started really quickly. We've got some templates that do really for demo purposes, but it's a good way to get started that you can go and by executing one of these templates, you, you can spin up the whole thing and it'll all auto wire. There's no manual configuration at all. So this is a good way to go get started where you can go fire this one template off and it'll spin up the server, the EAP, it'll deploy your applications, configure both sides, and you'd be good to go. And at the very end of the demo, hopefully we've got time and everything goes smoothly. I can, I'll, I'll show that piece as well. Um, and just lastly, there's a couple of different points I just want to make. Um, <laughs> A lot, of, all the, a lot of good stuff up at keycloak.org. Um, we're just talking right now about JEE applications deployed to EAP, but um, up on the community side, there's all sorts of other adapters um, for other frameworks or platforms that Keycloak supports. Uh, and the images that we're talking about, as Diogenes mentioned, we've got the, the tech preview um, out for EAP6 and the, the SSO server. Um, those images are up there and available, and it, when when the GA comes out, the, the, the GA images will be available there as well. Um, okay. So, I don't see any questions. I will hop over to the demo. Okay, can just, everybody... Just real quick, we're let, letting people sure. know that we have uh, some of the core key cloak engineers on this blue gene session. So. Uh, if uh, we have any type of, let's say, more deeper technical question, please feel free to ask them as well. Thank you. Cool. Thanks, Diogenes, and thanks, thanks everybody for joining. Um, can you guys, Diane? You can see my screen still, okay? Can see the VM? It looks perfect. Okay. Um, so I've got an OpenShift instance um, just running locally. It's a, a, a master and a node, so I've got everything just running inside of um, uh, one single VM. And as you can see, I've got a demo project set up, and I've got absolutely nothing running uh, inside of my project um, to start. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go spin up um, the, the SSO server itself. Um, so this is essentially that first bullet uh, when I was going through the template. I'll go to my little cheat sheet. Actually, let me go back. Here's my little cheat sheet. So I'm going to go... And I'm going to go and execute this particular template, right? So this is the SSO template. I'm spinning up the SSO7 server, and it's going to be backed by Postgres. Okay. So now we'll see that, that Postgres um, is going to spin up, and then the SSO server itself is going to spin up. 
Now you'll you'll notice here that I I, I didn't I didn't pass in any environmental variables right because we try to get these templates all to work um, out of the box with default. So in this case, it's it's going to go spin up these particular applications. Postgres is up. Postgres is ready. Uh, the SSO server is coming up. This will take a second. It's got to go, and once it connects to Postgres, it's got to go populate the database. But this is spinning up another pod or another container inside of OpenShift um, for the, the key cloak server, the SSO server itself. While this is coming up, this should take only a second. While this is coming up, I'll hop over to um, this is the this is the application I'm going to go deploy. So if you go take a look up in GitHub, this is up at GitHub um, Keycloak Keycloak examples. Um, there are four different apps. There's a bunch of different applications in here, but I'm going to focus on the the, the EAP based applications or the JE based applications. Um, app JE app profile JE SAML, which is a, a SAML, the other um, our, our OIDC uh, app profile JE and, and service tracks RS, which is just a, a web service. So we've got three kind of web front end applications and a, and a web service application on the back end. Okay, so this SSO is up. We go take a look at the route. So how are these guys exposed? It's going to go set up two different routes, one for HTTPS and one for HTTP. So if we go then log into this particular application. So this is the SSO server itself, right? So as I said, the initial image is gonna have uh, an initial uh, admin user that's just admin, admin. If I wanted to go and create another admin, there's a, a, you know, if you had passed in an ENV here to go and specify whatever your uh, admin user and credentials would be, that's how you do it. So let me go log in. Okay, so this is the, the key cloak uh, console. The first thing I'm gonna do for my demo is I'm gonna go create another realm, create a demo realm. And there's a key pair and a certificate associated uh, with every realm. So I'm gonna copy this realm certificate into my cheat sheet and I'll, and I'll explain this a little bit in more detail when I, when I get over to deploying my application, but uh, bear with me for a second. I, I just want to preserve that public key for when I deploy my apps. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go create some roles. So the roles that I'm going to create, if I hop back over to the application source, if I just pick one of these, I'll pick the, the web services one. If I go inside of the web services application source, and I take a look at the metadata that's associated with the web app, you'll notice a couple of things. You'll notice that there's a couple of, of the web services. There's really three web services that it exposes. There's a public one, there's unsecure, there's no security constraint. And then there's two secure uh, web services, one secured and one's admin. And the particular roles that you need to access these resources are the user role and the admin role. You'll also notice while we're here that inside of the login config, we've got a key cloak uh, tag, um, you know, this, this would normally be something like uh, basic or form. Uh, but in this case, this is the flag that's going to indicate that when we deploy this application, it's going to tell the image, hey, I'm a, you know, a key cloak or an SSO enabled application. I need to be auto wired, right? Go do all that magic configuration so that I'm secured through the SSO server. So the first thing I need to do is go and create these particular roles right, for my application. So I'm just gonna go create those roles. I'm gonna create a user role. I'm gonna create an admin role. Okay. And then I'm gonna go create some, some users. Um, just for the demo purposes, I'm gonna do all the kind of the, the, the user management through, um, through SSO or Keycloak itself. Uh, so I'm gonna go create, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go create a service user. And this isn't an end user. This is really just a user that's got the right to go and do some um, management inside of the realm. Um, so that it's, this is only going to be used to have one of the, the, the pod that is running the application be able to talk to the key cloak server directly and change the config. And that's how all the, uh, the kind of auto magic wiring happens. So let me save the service user. I'm gonna go give it some real credentials. I'm just gonna put in password for the password. Save this guy. 
and I'm going to give this guy some realm management capabilities. Again, this, this isn't something that you'd necessarily give to the end user, but this is just for kind of internal pod-to-pod -pod communication, from, you know, application configuration over to the uh, SSO server configuration. Okay, and then now I've got to go create an end user user. So I'm going to call this guy demo user, and I'll give him info. Save this guy. Give him some real credentials. Demo pass. Demo pass. Set the password, and now I'm going to give this end user the end user privileges, so we can actually has the rights to access the different resources within the, the sample application. So this is all I've got to do to go and set up the demo uh, manually on the SSO server side. So the next the next step is okay, great, we've got our SSO server um, set up and running, all ready for some applications. Those four applications that I had talked about. Let's go deploy those applications. Okay, so here's the next command that I'm gonna go issue. I'm gonna go kick this off because this will take a minute because it's gotta go do, uh, pull the source down from Git and do a build and then do a deploy. So let me just go get this guy started uh, and then I'll come back and explain what the command actually is. Kick this off. Okay, so we'll see right here a build popped up, right? So this image is now downloading all the source from, from GitHub up here, gonna do the build, spin up another pod that's got EAP running in it, deploy those applications and do all the, uh, the automatic config. One thing I do want to show while that's going on is right now there's no clients, right? These clients, um, you know, correspond to um, the end user applications or they will. So there's nothing set up here. There will be once the the applications are all deployed and get up, um, are up and running. So let me come back and and explain what's going on in in that command that I just issued. So the first thing is. I'm, I'm using the SSO enabled EAP7 template, right? And S2I means that, hey, this is, this is actually going to pull some source down and do a build and then go and build another image with the built source on it and go deploy that, that combo image. I'm giving the application uh, a name itself. In this case, I'm just calling it Hello World. I also, and this is maybe the most important part, I also passed in, I said, hey, where is the SSO or Keycloak server? Right, so it's over at secure SSO demo cloud apps example .com, which is exactly what I'm looking at here, right? So I'm just pointing the app server where the applications are to the SSO server so it knows how to talk to it. Um, SSO realm is demo, that's the one I manually created. Public key we had talked about. Um, it's not required but recommended to actually pass that in. And then here's the SSO username and password that I also went and created. This is the service user, not the end user, right? So this is the user that has the, the realm management capabilities, which is going to allow this, this user to make a call over from the, the application pod to go and, and modify the client and create the corresponding client so you don't have to go do all that um, manually. Um, and I've also modified um, the, the branch that I'm pulling in up from GitHub. In this case, um, the, the templates right now are tied to uh, for the tech preview, but I'm using the latest and greatest stuff. So you can go and modify, hey, where do I want my source, what branch up in GitHub, um, all that kind of good stuff. Okay, so let's come back and see where we are. Okay, so everything's kind of been up and running. Um, the build happened. Uh, hello world. So this is my EAP instance that is now up and running, right? So if we go take a look at, you know, I can't get through a demo without showing logs, right? So Let's just go take a look at the logs of the application server where I went and deployed my four little applications. Okay, and you'll see here in the logs that, hey, here, here are the four war files that were deployed that I pulled down from GitHub and built, right? So, and as also as part of this deployment, when these were deployed, it also modified the, the app service configuration to have all of the key cloak, whether it's OIDC or SAML. So all that's automatically configured on this side. And also, if I come over, come back over to uh, the Keycloak or SSO server side, you'll now see there's four new clients. So there's new client config for the four different applications that I've got here. So there's really kind of minimal manual configuration you've got to do. And I think this is one of the kind of the powerful pieces about what, what OpenShift and the images are going to provide is it's, it's 
really all you've got to do is is be able to specify this when you deploy a particular application, right? You say your application is a key cloak or a key cloak SAML application, spin up your template, pass it in a little bit of details about your environment, and, and you're good to go. And then all the configuration happens yourself. So you're not messing with XML. You don't have to go in and manually create all this stuff. Okay, so what does this actually ultimately look like at the end? Let's go take a look at the actual application. If I come over here and take a look at the routes again, I've now got uh, an HTTP and an HTTPS route for accessing the actual apps. So if I go take a look at here, um, if I come over and I go to secure, hello world, that's just as good a one as any. So I go hit this particular application, right? So I go hit my little app, and actually, let me let me hop over to a little more interesting one. Let me go to this one. So this is an application that is actually going to hit the web services application on the back end, right? So if you remember, I've got three different front end web apps, and then one back end app that just exposes some web services. This particular front end application is going and hitting those three different web services that you can see in that are configured here in the source. So there's a public one that's not secured, a secured one that I need the user role for, and an admin one that I need the admin for. So I can go and hit the public one, great, right? I haven't done any login, it's, it's a, that web service is, is exposed, no problem. I go hit the secured one, uh, this is actually secured, I don't have the role because I haven't logged into the SSO server, so it failed. Now if I go hit the login button, you'll notice that it redirects me over to, I'm no longer at my application, I am now actually talking to the SSO server. So now I'm gonna log in as the end user, which is demo user, demo pass, login, and it takes me back to the app. Now you'll notice a couple of things. One, I've got a logout button now because I've got the, the proper credentials um, to get to the app. I can also go and take a look at the account. This account button showed up, if I go hit account, it takes me actually back to the SSO and, and goes and takes me into that particular user. So who am I logged in as? You can go and view the user over on the SSO server and then hop you back to the application. And now I should have access to everything. I can still have public. I now have the user role because I'm logged in as demo user who has that user role and ditto for admin, right? So I can now hitting those web services that are secured. Go hit log out and I'm back to where I started. Um, Similarly, the, these same kind of capabilities exist, whether it's for, for uh, app. This is an OIDC app, but I could just as easily go app profile, delete SAML, do the same kind of thing, log in as demo user. And there's the application, right? I could do similar things if I hop over and I, I wanna get maybe not the SAML application, but the OIDC application. I'm already logged in, right? Since I logged into the SAML application, those credentials are still valid. I'm still the same user with the right roles, and now I can go and take a look at this particular application. So that's really kind of in a nutshell what I what I wanted to demo. Um, I'll take a look and see if there's any if there's any kind of questions. Um, what I want to do, if there aren't any other kind of questions here, what I can do is I'm going to go delete all this stuff, and I just want to go show you the the all-in-one uh, template, because I think it's a great way to get started. So let me go delete all this stuff that I just created. Gotta love the beauty of paths, right? Easy up, easy down. Okay, so I come back to pause. Let me just wait until everything's gone. This will take a second. So that what, I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go run this guy. Soon as everything's deleted. So what this is, is I think it actually happened. I'll come back. Yep, everything's gone. So let me spin up this all in one. So what this is is I'm 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 now firing up a different template, and this template is is just as the name says, it's an all in one, right? I don't have to do any of the kind of complicated stuff that's up, or reasonably complicated stuff that's up here. What it's gonna do is it's gonna spin up um, the SSO7 server in one pod or container. It's gonna go and spin up a, a separate pod or container that's got an EAP instance in it, go pull down, do the build, deploy all my applications, uh, and do this all in one, uh, just in one simple command, right? So it's gonna do all of this stuff in one step. 
So, you know, in the real world, this is the way people are going to do things, right? You'll go spin up um, your, your SSO server, and then as application teams come on board, they'll go spin up um, different EAP instances um, that will have their applications deployed uh, and tie it all in, into that, to that SSO server or, or maybe different SSO servers running inside of the same pad. Uh, but this is a really kind of good way to get started because in, in one command, you can spin up the whole thing itself. There's no manual configuration at all. So this will take a minute, but as you'll see, it, it's really going through all the steps. And in a minute, we'll, I'll be right back to where I was um, a, a minute or so ago. So, so with there that. Is, there is one yep. question in there. Um, Mark is uh, mentioning, and I think one of the, the core Keycloak guys is, is trying to answer it. You mentioned that the users are, are in Keycloak for the demo, but what does a production deployment look like and where are the users typically stored? And um, I think that is Boleslaw who's trying to answer that. So I'm going to see if I can unmute him. And he's unmuted. Boleslaw, if you'd like to answer that. Yeah, you can. Well, I think Bill was mentioning it at the beginning that you can use a relation database so bill can i guess explain what's supported in the templates but uh like postgres or my mysql uh and then you can obviously connect ldap uh servers uh or configure it with uh, kerberos uh, for authentication yeah so in openshift so in openshift now the the templates and the image um, support um, spinning up just like we did, spinning up either backed by Postgres, MySQL, or the internal EAP H2 database. Um, but there's nothing to prevent you. And the nice thing about using those is, is that it does all the auto wiring. One, one of the things you, you, you didn't see is at no point, even though the SSO server is being backed by uh, Postgres instances running, at no point did you ever see me go in and do any configuration to configure the SSO server to tell it where Postgres was, right? So this is one of the, the kind of really cool things about OpenShift and PaaS is that this auto wiring all happens, this auto config. So all that magic happens for the, those three databases, um, Postgres, MySQL, or the H2 database. But there's nothing to prevent you from going and spinning up this server and then manually going in and pointing the persistence back at, um, you know, an, like uh, you know, an LDAP server, as was just mentioned, or a different database, potentially a, a database that's external to the PaaS, right? Maybe you've got you know, some huge Oracle rack infrastructure that's running outside of the PaaS that you want to hook your SSO server into. You don't maybe want the database running inside of the PaaS. You've already got all that identity management, um, you know, user user management um, running somewhere, and you just want to hook your SSO server into it. So you can certainly do that. But the the at least today, the the auto wiring and auto magic is hooked up um, through the templates and stuff through um, for, for those three databases I mentioned. So those are the questions. Everything right now is in um, technical preview, and so I, I'm sure Bosla and Bill Burke and the Keycloak folks, uh, as well as the folks that have built these images and templates for OpenShift, are definitely looking for um, feedback and your thoughts on them and other adapters that could be written for Keycloak. Where's the best way um, for people to reach out to you guys and give you feedback on this? Um, I, I can certainly, so we've got um, a couple of folks from, from my team, I believe my manager is on, Kevin Connor. Um, there's a, a lot of different resources you can do to get to, um, to, get to the, the engineering teams who are building these images. And we've also got, um, and thanks guys, got a lot of the folks from the actual the Keycloak um, team on as well. So we've got kind of both teams, the, the team that takes um, you know, the, the, these, these middleware products and open shifts them or dockerizes them or however you want to call it. Um, but we've also got the core Keycloak team as well that's certainly available for feedback. And, and the, the one last question that I'm seeing here, um, yeah, you could you can send an email to B. Burke, um, and I'll post that with the and, and a register on the mailing list. There's one question here that's the typical one that everyone always asks is, when even a ballpark date could we expect um, Red Hat SSO to GA and be available? And, um, I don't know if anyone has, has an answer for that. Obviously, publicly, we cannot really claim an GA date, although we were quite open in the community. So uh, on the main list, it was announced that 1.9.x uh, branch 
is being polished and will be a base for a supported product offering. I think the good answer is right now it's sooner sooner than later we will have a supported product. That's that's my favorite favorite answer for that question. It comes out with everything. That you do. The the intention is is to announce it on our summit. Um, so that's uh, that's that's where we're at so far as well. Yeah, and, and I and I love that part too because almost everything is is driven by the summit. That's a great motivator to get things done and out there. There's one more question here. Um, can you talk about authenticating against a, rem a removed SAML or OIDC server? I've seen lots of requests to do something similar. Not remove. All right. I see. Remote. Uh, and, uh, Bill, I mean Bill Lecosti, can you actually open the, the the admin UI and show just show the screens for identity brokering? So adding, uh, uh, yeah, I. Oh, yeah. whoops! Sorry, I, I, I'm spinning up. I gotta, I, I switched. I killed this one, so I gotta go back one second. This is the all-in-one now. There's no project. And yeah, so here, if you add, click add provider. Yeah, you can add either uh, some two base or OpenID Connect base or any social kind of provider, and then you can. Uh, authenticate against those, or if you click on user federation and then add provider, here you can add uh, either LDAP or Kerberos, and you can do quite powerful configuration, syncing options, and mapping uh, what it's mapped into QCloak, what is mapped into the token, and so on. So there is a lot of flexibility. Uh, well, then I think that might be um, all the questions we have right now. So that's um, a much faster demo than our previous one. So thank you very much, Bill DeCoste, um, for taking the time to swap laptops and um, for Diogenes for giving us this in intro pieces there. We will, uh, of course, do any Q&A that you need um, on the mailing list. Um, or you can register for the key quote mailing list as well. Um, and so I encourage you to do that. And you'll be definitely seeing more of this, I'm sure, at Red Hat Summit. So thank you to all of the core key quote folks that have come on to this. And um, we're hoping that we can keep demoing this and maybe show it with a few more adapters in the not too distant future. And there's one other announcement. Um, we'll be starting up an, an open shift commons SIG for image builders starting May 4th. And there's new um, on the interest on the OpenShift Commons page, there is a list of special interest groups. And the new one this week is image builders. And if you're interested in creating um, images that are redistributable and ready to run on OpenShift, I encourage you to sign up for that. So um, thanks again to everybody for joining us. And we'll be posting this recording probably tomorrow um, as a blog post with some of these links that we've had here today. So thanks again, and we'll talk to you all again very, very soon.